Think about this. What does Putin mean when he says the West fears a strong China more than a strong Russia? In recent news, a fascinating dialogue unfolded as Tucker Carlson sat down with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The conversation spanned wide-ranging topics, including Putin's perspective on the West's fear of China, the controversy surrounding U.S. military support in Ukraine, and the perceived threat posed by advancements in artificial intelligence and genetics. So, buckle up as we navigate through the labyrinth of this intriguing discourse. Let's delve into these intriguing topics. Dive into Putin's perception of the West's fear of China and Russia. As we unpack Putin's interview, one of his salient points was his belief that the West fears a strong China more than a strong Russia. This statement echoes the shifting global power dynamics and the increasing prominence of China on the world stage. Putin's assertion provides a glimpse into his view of international relations, where power and fear play central roles. His statement suggests that he believes the West's anxieties are rooted in the rise of other global powers, rather than specific actions or policies. In this case the strength of China, economically and militarily, is perceived as a greater threat than Russia's power. But why does Putin think this way? China's meteoric rise over the past few decades has undeniably reshaped the global landscape. Its economic prowess, ambitious belt and road initiative, and significant advancements in technology, have made it a formidable force that the West must reckon with. Meanwhile, Russia, despite its considerable influence, particularly in its near abroad, doesn't quite match the comprehensive power and global reach that China has developed. So, from Putin's perspective, the West's fear of China's rise could be seen as a validation of China's growing power and an implicit acknowledgement of a shifting global power balance. However, Putin's statement also reflects a strategic viewpoint. By highlighting the West's alleged fear of China, he subtly underscores the potential for Russia and China to align more closely, further challenging Western dominance. But let's not forget, international relations are complex, and fear isn't the sole driver of policy or action. While Putin's perspective offers insight into his worldview, it is but one lens through which to understand the intricate web of global politics. The global power dynamics are indeed shifting. Let's explore Putin's stance on the U.S. military support in Ukraine. As we dive into this, it's essential to understand that Putin perceives any U.S. military aid to Ukraine as a provocation. His viewpoint is rooted in Russia's long-standing concerns about Western encroachment on what it considers its sphere of influence. This perception has only been exacerbated by the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, which Putin sees as a direct challenge to Russian security. In the interview, Putin made it clear that he views the prospect of Ukraine receiving military aid from the U.S. as a hostile act. He suggested that such actions could escalate tensions and possibly lead to a broader conflict. This perspective underscores the high-stakes nature of the situation and the delicate balancing act required to manage it. Now if we shift our focus to Putin's comments about former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, it becomes even more intriguing. Putin claimed that Clinton had initially been open to Russia joining NATO, only to later change her stance. He sees this as an example of the West's inconsistency and duplicity when dealing with Russia. This claim however needs to be taken with a grain of salt. While it's true that some Western leaders expressed openness to the idea of Russia joining NATO in the post-Cold War era, this was always contingent on Russia meeting the alliance's stringent membership criteria. Moreover, Clinton, during her tenure as Secretary of State, was known for her tough stance on Russia. In essence, Putin's comments on these issues reflect his broader narrative of Russia being unfairly targeted and marginalized by the West. He uses this narrative to rally domestic support and justify his actions on the international stage. The geopolitical tensions are certainly rising. What does Putin have to say about the detained WSJ journalist? This question has been on the minds of many since the arrest of Evan Gershkovich, a Wall Street Journal reporter, in March 2023. Accused of espionage, a charge strongly refuted by not only Gershkovich himself, his family and the journal, but also the US government, Gershkovich has been languishing in a Moscow prison for almost a year. During the recent interview with Tucker Carlson, Putin revealed that he's not entirely averse to the idea of releasing Gershkovich. He hinted at ongoing negotiations through special services channels and expressed belief that an agreement is within reach. This glimmer of hope, however, came with a chilling caveat. The freedom of Gershkovich might come at the cost of releasing a Russian assassin serving a life sentence in Germany. Yes, you heard it right. Putin seemed to suggest a swap, a life for a life. 
The Russian president didn't explicitly name the assassin but referenced a man serving life in a Berlin prison for killing a Georgian military officer. This revelation undoubtedly adds a new layer of complexity to the already delicate situation. Gershkovich's arrest and continued detention have strained U.S.-Russia relations, with the U.S. State Department designating him as wrongfully detained. While the U.S. government has previously attempted to negotiate Gershkovich's release, a clear resolution has yet to be reached. Although Putin doubled down on charging Gershkovich with espionage, claiming that he was caught receiving classified information, it's important to remember that these are just claims. Without transparent investigations and fair trials, it's difficult to separate fact from fiction. From this conversation, one thing is clear. Gershkovich's situation is a chess piece on the board of international diplomacy. It's a grim reminder of the challenges journalists face in their pursuit of truth, particularly in spaces where freedom of the press is not a guaranteed right. This situation indeed puts a spotlight on the delicate matters of international diplomacy. As we tread these murky waters, we can only hope for a resolution that ensures justice and upholds the principles of press freedom. Venture into Putin's perspective on the advances in AI and genetics. As we delve into the intricacies of Putin's thoughts, we encounter a starkly ominous view of the future. The Russian leader perceives the rapid strides in artificial intelligence and genetics as a looming threat to humanity, rather than a beacon of progress. He talks of a future where genetic research can create what he terms as superhumans. These are specialized human beings, genetically engineered for specific roles. Be it athletes with unparalleled physical prowess, scientists with extraordinary intellect, or military personnel with enhanced combat capabilities. This vision of a genetically modified humanity is not far from realization. Putin refers to reports of Elon Musk, the tech magnate, already implanting a chip into a human brain in the United States. This is a reference to Musk's ambitious Neuralink project, which aims to create a symbiotic relationship between humans and AI. However, Putin's concerns stem from the ethical quandaries and potential threats such advancements pose. The potential for misuse is enormous. Could we be on the brink of a new arms race, not for nuclear supremacy, but for genetic and AI dominance? Could the creation of superhumans lead to a new form of inequality, where the genetically enhanced form and elite class, leaving the unmodified masses behind? Furthermore, the intersection of AI and genetics could lead to unforeseen consequences. AI with its capacity for rapid learning and decision-making, combined with our growing understanding of human genetics, could result in developments beyond our current comprehension. The question remains, are we ready to handle the Pandora's box that this combination could open? It's clear that Putin, like many world leaders, is grappling with these questions. The rapid pace of technological advancement, the ethical dilemmas it presents and the potential threats it poses are all part of a complex puzzle that we must solve as we march into the future. The future of technology and its potential threats are indeed a concern for world leaders. Let's summarize the key takeaways from Putin's interview. There was a clear emphasis on the shifting power dynamics between Russia, China and the West. With Putin's assertive declaration that the West fears a strong China more than a strong Russia, it's clear he's positioning Russia as a force to be reckoned with. His statement on the inevitability of the rising sun is a metaphor for the unstoppable rise of certain global powers, perhaps indicating his perception of Russia's position on the world stage. This is a viewpoint that will undoubtedly continue to influence international relations, particularly between Russia and Western nations. In the realm of Ukraine, Putin's labeling of any U.S. military support as a provocation expresses his resistance to Western intervention. This perspective could potentially escalate tensions between Russia and the United States, further complicating the situation in Ukraine. The case of Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich, currently detained in Russia, was another critical point. Putin's openness to negotiating his release brings a ray of hope, but the potential cost the freedom of a convicted Russian assassin, remains a contentious issue. Lastly, Putin's views on the advances in artificial intelligence and genetics, likening them to threats, underscore his concerns about the ethical implications of such technologies. His reference to Elon Musk's brain chip experiments indicates his awareness and apprehension of the pace of technological advancements. Indeed, Putin's interview gives us a glimpse into the mind of one of the world's most influential leaders.